How are you my student? Welcome to our physics lesson today. My name is Purity Anzelimo. Our topic, we are continuing with the Newton's, the Newton's laws of motion. Newton's laws of motion. Uh, in our previous lesson, we covered the Newton's first of motion the newton's first law of motion and we were able to state the newton's first law of motion which stated that a body remains in its state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless acted upon by an external force let me state it here that a body remains and body remains in its state, in its state of rest or uniform motion or uniform motion in a straight line, in a straight line unless acted upon, unless acted upon by an external force unless acted upon by an external force so this is the newton's first law of motion where by a body remains in its state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless it is acted upon by an external force again in newton's first law of motion we were able to calculate momentum momentum whereby we said momentum which is denoted by P momentum is given by the product or it is simply the product of mass and the velocity so it is given by mass mass of the body that is denoted by M multiplied by the velocity of that body V and therefore momentum is given by mass times the velocity whereby we said mass must be in kilograms velocity in the SI units that is meters per second and therefore we said that the SI unit of momentum is kilogram meters per second so that is the Newton's first law of motion in our today's lesson I want us to go ahead to the other law of motion in this topic we'll be looking at the laws of motion which we say there are three so we are going to look at newton's second law of motion the newton's second law newton's second law of motion newton's second law of motion so by the end of this lesson you should be in a position to state the Newton's second law of motion and again you should also be in a position to state the relationship between force, mass and acceleration. So those are our objectives for this lesson, stating the Newton's second law of motion and also being in a position to tell the relationship that exists between force, mass and acceleration between these uh, or among those three force mass and acceleration so newton's second law of motion and here i want us to consider consider a body a body of mass m consider a body of mass m traveling traveling at an initial velocity at an initial velocity velocity u that is the initial velocity the unit meters per second consider a body of mass m traveling at an initial velocity u meters per second therefore it means that the the initial therefore the initial momentum the initial momentum for this body we can write it as pi i for the initial initial momentum i therefore will be given by the mass of that body the mass of the body 
mass m multiplied by the velocity of the body, that is the initial velocity, the velocity of the body v. And therefore, we can come and say therefore that the initial velocity is given by mass multiplied by, sorry, here it is not v because we are talking of the initial velocity u. So our initial velocity, this is initial velocity u, so it is mass multiplied by the initial velocity u. So this will be the initial momentum. Initial momentum will be given by mass multiplied by the initial velocity u. Now let's say a force, a force f. Uh, before we move on, uh, we can talk of a force. Let's have a force f acting on that body. Acting on the body for time, let's say for a time t seconds for some time, that is t seconds, and therefore the velocity will therefore change. If a force acting acts on the body for a certain number of seconds, so the velocity will change, the velocity changes, changes to, let's say, to say v meters per second. So if a force f acting on the uh, if a, a, force, uh, uh, a force F acting on the body for time t seconds, the velocity therefore will change to, let's say, v meters per second. A force F acts on the body. We can talk of a force F acts on the body for the time t seconds, and therefore the velocity changes to v meters per second. And therefore, we are going now to have the final momentum after the force has acted on that body. So therefore, our final momentum, which we can write as Pf, final momentum, will therefore be equal to the mass of that body, the mass of the body, mass m, multiplied by the velocity. Now, the other velocity, after it has been acted upon by this force. So we multiply it by the final velocity, the final velocity v and therefore our final momentum our final momentum pf will therefore be equal to mass multiplied by the final velocity so this will give us the final momentum so we have our initial momentum here we have our final momentum final momentum and the initial momentum. So all these we are moving ahead so that we can be able to derive the Newton's second law of motion. And therefore, we can simply come and say therefore, that therefore we can be able to calculate the rate of change in momentum. The rate of change in momentum, the rate of change in momentum simply means We'll take the change in momentum, change in momentum. When you hear of the one rate, meaning that there is dividing by the time. The change in momentum divided by the time that is taken. So the rate of change in momentum will therefore be equal to change in momentum. And our change in momentum is the final momentum minus the initial momentum. So we are going to have the final momentum minus the initial momentum divided by the time taken. So this will be the change, the rate of change in momentum. So this is, will be our rate of change in momentum, which is the final momentum minus the initial momentum divided by the time that is taken. So in this case, we had seen that a force F acting on the body not just a force, but if an unbalanced force, this should be unbalanced, an unbalanced force, F, acting on the body, so the velocity is changing to this. And therefore, we can say that if we have a small, a small force being applied, a small force, a small change, a small force applied, a small causes a small change. It also causes a small change in velocity. 
and because we think that velocity is directly proportional to the momentum it therefore means that a small force causing a small change in velocity it also means that this will be a small momentum small momentum and again a big force or a bigger force a bigger force causes a bigger force causes a bigger or a big change a big change in velocity and therefore this will be a bigger or a big momentum a big momentum and therefore we can see keenly that the force the force is directly proportional to the momentum whereby if you apply a small force it is causing a small momentum small change in momentum if we have a bigger force it will cause a bigger change in momentum and therefore we can simply come and say because force is therefore directly proportional to the change in momentum so we can simply come and say that therefore the force force is directly proportional directly proportional to to the rate of change to the rate of change in momentum to the rate of change in momentum and therefore we can simply come and say therefore that force is directly proportional to the rate of change in momentum to the rate of change in momentum whereby this represents the change in momentum per time so it is the rate of change in momentum so when we have this relationship where force is directly proportional to the rate of change in momentum this is simply what we are referring to as the newton's this is the newton's second law of motion and i want us to state the newton's second law of motion so we can say therefore that newton's the newton's second law motion states that states that the rate of change in momentum is directly proportional to the external force producing the change and takes place in the direction of force so the rate of change rate of change momentum the rate of change momentum of a body is directly proportional to is directly proportional to the external force is directly proportional to the external force producing the change producing the change place and takes place in the direction of force and takes place in the direction of force and this is simply what we refer to as the newton's second law of motion whereby we are saying that the force will be directly proportional to the rate of change in momentum so therefore the rate of change in momentum of a body is directly proportional to the external force producing the change and it takes place in the direction of the force that is in the direction of the force applied and that's what we refer to as the newton second law of motion so you can see where we are deriving the newton second law of motion whereby first we are considering a body with an initial velocity u so we calculate the initial momentum then when an unbalanced force f is applied on that body for a time t seconds and the velocity changes to v meters per second therefore we'll have the final momentum which will be mass multiplied by the final velocity we can move ahead and calculate because we have the force acting for a certain number of seconds when we calculate the rate of change in momentum it is simply refers to the change in momentum all over the time taken so we have the final momentum 
subtract the initial momentum divided by the time taken. And we are continuing to say that when a small force is applied, it will cause a small change in velocity. And therefore, because momentum and velocity are directly proportional, so when there is a small change in velocity, there is also a small change in momentum. Again, a bigger force causes a bigger change in velocity and therefore also a big change in momentum. And therefore we are saying that force is directly proportional to the rate of change in momentum. And this is what we are calling our Newton's second law of motion. And this, this is change in momentum. This is when we have this, this is change in momentum, which is being given by the final momentum minus the initial momentum. That is the change in momentum. So Newton's second law of motion states that the rate of change in momentum of a body is directly proportional to the external force producing the change and takes place in the direction of force. So I want us to move ahead to use now the Newton's second law of motion to come up now with the relationship. So we'll look at the relationship that exists. So relation, are still in Newton's second law of motion. So relation between force, the relationship that exists between force, mass, and acceleration and acceleration the relation between force mass and acceleration and for us to derive this uh, this relationship between the three force mass and acceleration we are going to start by considering the newton's second law of motion so we've stated the newton's second law of motion and we have seen that the force is directly proportional to the rate of change in momentum. It's directly proportional to the rate of change in momentum. And therefore, this simply means that the change in momentum is given by the final momentum minus the initial momentum. And therefore, we can move ahead. Therefore, force is directly proportional to the change in momentum the rate of change in momentum, final momentum minus the initial momentum divided by the time taken. Again, we know very well that the final momentum is given by mass times the final velocity. Then we know very well that the initial momentum is given by mass multiplied by the initial velocity. And therefore, it means that force is directly proportional to the rate of change that is here we have the rate of change in momentum final momentum minus the initial momentum divided by the time taken so with this again we can move ahead therefore force is directly proportional to we can factor out m that is the mass we factor out mass so we remain here with the v minus u divided by t from our uh, from our knowledge previous knowledge that is on linear motion we know very well from linear motion we know that v minus u that is the rate of change in velocity is equal to acceleration the rate of change the rate of change in velocity which is final velocity minus initial velocity all of a time taken is equal to acceleration and therefore our formula we reduce to f that is force is directly proportional to mass and since we have v minus u over t as acceleration so we have force is directly proportional to the product of mass and acceleration so we can move ahead to remove that sign so we are having the sign of direct proportionality whereby now we have force is directly proportional to mass multiplied by the acceleration so when we want to remove this sign and we put an equal to sign when we want to remove 
this and put an equal to sign, we are going to have f therefore is equal to, we introduce now a constant, is equal to a constant k mass times acceleration, where k is our constant, is a constant of proportionality. So we want to find the value of k. We know very well that one newton, one newton, or a force of one, one newton, a force of one newton causes a body of mass, a body of mass one kilogram to accelerate to accelerate by one meters per square seconds. A force of one newton will cause a body of mass one kilogram to accelerate by one meters per second. Meaning that if our F is one newton, then we want to find the value of K. Our mass is one kilogram and the acceleration is one. Therefore, it means that our K will be one over one, which is one. And therefore, our formula reduces to F is equal to mass multiplied by the acceleration because the value of K is 1. And therefore, this is the relationship that we have between force, mass, and acceleration. In this case, where, where F is the force and the force is in newtons, then we have our M, which is the mass, and the mass is in kilograms. Then we have A, which is the acceleration, the acceleration, and the acceleration is in meters per square seconds. So that is the relationship that is there between F, uh, that is the force, mass, and also the acceleration. We are getting it from the Newton's second law of motion, whereby the rate of change in momentum is directly proportional to the force. And therefore, we have the force directly proportional to the rate of change in momentum. This is the change in momentum. This is the rate of change in momentum directly proportional to the force. So final momentum is mass times final velocity. This is our initial momentum divided by time. We have factored out m. So to have this, and we know that v minus u over t is acceleration because acceleration is de defined as the rate of change in velocity. So we have F is equal to MA. And therefore we put now the equal to sign, we introduce a constant of proportionality. Then we are saying that a force of one will cause a body of mass one kilogram to accelerate by one meters per square seconds. And therefore the value of K will become one. And therefore we don't have to put the K because if it is one, when we multiply one by this, this t remains. So we have that force is equal to mass multiplied by acceleration. And that is the relationship that we have between force, mass, and acceleration. And that is the Newton's second law of motion. And then this is the relationship between force, mass, and acceleration. So at this point, you can be in a position to state the Newton's second law of motion. You can also be in a position to derive this relationship. It is very questionable to, uh, it is examinable. That is, you can be told to derive the connection. That is the relationship between force, mass, and acceleration. And therefore, from what we have gone through, you should know that the Newton's second law of motion states that the rate of change in momentum of a body is directly proportional to the external force producing the change and takes place in the direction of force. And then we've also seen that force is therefore equal to mass times acceleration. So we have some formulas that we've come up with. Then you also need to know that force is directly proportional to the rate of change in momentum. And this formula is what we refer to as the Newton's second law of motion. So you can write it in this form or you write it in once 
whereby the rate of change in momentum is directly proportional to the external force producing the change and takes place and takes place in the direction and takes place in the direction of force in the direction of force so i'd like you to do this exercise do the exercise you'll do two questions whereby the first one you should state the newton's state the newton's second law second law of motion state the newton's second law of motion then in the other one derive the relation the relation f is equal to mass multiplied by acceleration derive that relation and when you are told in the first part to state the newton second law of motion you are going now to use the second law of motion to derive the relation that is f is equal to mass times acceleration so during our next lesson we'll be doing some questions on this to apply these formulas that you have been able to derive in this Newton's second law of motion. So we'll do several examples and also some exercises on the same. Thank you for being attentive. Let us meet during the next lesson.